Uh, well, good morning, Tacoa Church. Uh, I'm excited to be with you today. Um, and I, man, God has been working on this message in me this week. Um, I was actually sitting back there, standing back there, just praying of, um, of I'm like, you know, some mornings I'm just ready to bring it. Uh, and this morning I'm, I left it all at, at the foot of the cross this week. Um, and I want to take you guys there with me this morning. Um, I think God's got a powerful thing to say this morning. Um, if you're new to our church, I want to say welcome. My name is Austin. My wife, Allie, and I are the lead pastors here at Tacoa, and we're glad you're with us today. And this morning, I want to share a story um, from the Bible. We're in this series about stories. And, you know, over the past couple weeks, fig trees and fig leaves have come up in my life multiple times. Have you been hearing about them like me? No. Okay. I didn't think so. Probably not. But you know what? When we start to just see something like multiple times or God starts to bring our attention to something um, that like is all of a sudden we just are noticing it where we didn't before. You know, it's kind of like when you're thinking about buying a new car and you're like all of a sudden see that car you're thinking about everywhere. Um, and sometimes God works that way of, hey, all of a sudden I'm, I'm noticing this like God's in it. He's trying to say something. Um, he's trying to speak something. He's trying to catch our attention. And, you know, what we see is important. It tells us a lot. What's on the outside, we say, often comes from the inside. And it can be good that comes from the inside that's expressed through love or kindness, joy, generosity. It can be sin. It can be evil that kind of comes out in selfishness or, or greed, putting ourselves first. Um, and we often, as humans, we put on a mask to cover ourselves and to, to be seen and perceived by others in a certain way. Often, you know, maybe you go to certain places, you dress differently depending on where you go um, and what it looks like. And, you know, I, I, I saw a, a dog wearing a sweater, and I thought, that looks ridiculous. And uh, maybe you thought so, too. Um, and, you know, I thought it was ridiculous because God, dogs don't have arms. So if you put clothes on a dog, I think you should put two pairs of pants on the dog. I don't know what you think about that. Um, and people... Yeah, right? And I actually think you probably shouldn't put any clothes on a dog. It's a dog. Um, it doesn't, God, God clothed it. Let it be. Um, humans are different. We'll actually look at that, why we have clothes. But um, uh, you know what? We, we look like we, people say dress for the job you want, not the job you have. And, you know, we structure our lives, our personalities even, so that, that, that what we think will make us happy and feel good, what we think will make us look good, what we think other people will look good around us, often to cover our anxiety or our loneliness or our insecurities, our emptiness. And Jesus is not fooled by that. But the good news today is that he wants to bring you to a better way of living. Today we're going to look at the story of Jesus and a fig tree. It's a bit of a complicated story, but as I, I opened with, I think there's so much power in this. And my message today is called Faith or Fig Leaves. I'm actually really proud of that title. I think it's a good one. I got the double F going there, like old school preacher status. And, um, and I'm, I want to ask you the question, where is your trust? Is, is your faith in God or is it in the fig trees of your, fig leaves of your life, trying to, trying to cover up things in your life? Where is your trust? Most of us have a hard time with trust. It's human nature because we've been let down too many times. The older we get, the more we're let down by other people around us. And, and, and then we become more reserved because it's happened too many times. Many of us feel the same way, like we, we transfer that over to God. Other people have let us down, of, and we just think, you know what, God's going to do the same. Maybe things didn't work out how we thought they were or wanted them to, and so we feel that way about God as well. We transfer it over to Him. But I want to invite you to trust God this morning, and the payoff for this is huge. So the story starts, and there's multiple parts. There's three parts to the story starts in Mark chapter 3, and Jesus is, he's staying in Bethany, and a little less than two miles away is the temple in Jerusalem. So he's like spending the night there, and he's going to Jerusalem. And on the way, in the morning, he's walking, and he's hungry. And it says, seeing a, a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. So he goes to this tree that was in leaf, and it's a little confusing here in the text because I don't know about you, but like, I don't like, pick a lot of figs from trees. And so it says like, it wasn't the season for figs. Why did he look for figs? Well, what it actually means is it wasn't the season for ripe figs. Like, there should have been fruit on the tree. It just, wasn't the, it just hadn't matured yet. 
right? Like, it, it's not ready to be picked and have the sweetness. Like, it's, it's that orange that's on the tree, but, you know, have you ever picked an orange too early and you're like, oh, this is really tart right now. And so there was fruit that he could have eaten, um, and people would pick it and eat it sometimes because it was still edible. It just wasn't as flavorful. And so he goes to the tree, and it's got leaves on it, so it should have fruit. And so he goes, he, wa he wants to pick a fig. This is a fig, if you've never seen a fig. I've eaten them a few times in my life, but I've actually never seen a whole fig. And so I was like, okay, what is it? This is a fig. And so he goes, and he, he wants to eat it. He's ready for a snack. I love it. I th it's Jesus, like, on his way to, to the temple in the morning, like, first century protein bar. Like, I'm a little hungry. You know, have you ever got one? Like, we've got them still today, right? You got one of these big bars. Of, he's like, I'm hungry. I need a snack. I didn't eat enough breakfast. Like, I want some food in the morning. And, and he, he, he doesn't have protein bars, so they would just pick it off the side of the road in the tree when it's ready. And there was no figs on it. There's no fruit. And so then he responds, and he says, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And the disciples heard it. And if you're like me, you might think, like, overreaction, Jesus? Like, I know you're hangry a little bit, but come on, you're going to curse out the tree over not having fruit like that one time you walked by it? Like, you flipped out at Peter, or, right, and called him Satan for, for trying to tempt you, and, and I get it a little bit. But, like, the tree didn't have fruit one morning. Like, maybe it was coming later. Maybe it was a bad year for that tree. Like, just maybe next year, come back. Maybe it was a bad year. Like, Jesus, that's a little, that's a little much. You know, and, and maybe he was a little stressed out because he's about to go into the temple, and, like, he, he's, he's going to throw down in the temple, and some stuff is going to happen. And may, so maybe he's a little stressed out, but I don't think he was just in, not in control of his mo emotions because we see that he, he was all through the New Testament. But I think there's something vital here for Jesus, something that upsets him so much he curses the tree to die. And so it's time to listen up. What upsets Jesus that much? Fig leaves with no faith. Fig leaves with no fruit is what upsets Jesus this much. And I'll tell you, the, the tree was pretending on the outside to be healthy. It had the leaves. It looked how it was supposed to look. But Jesus kind of pulls the leaves back. This isn't a fig leaf, but right, he pulls the, the leaves back to look underneath where the fruit would be under the leaves, and, and there's nothing there. And at the core, even though it looked healthy on the outside, at the core from its roots, it was not a healthy tree. And, and it's corrupted from the roots up. As an example in nature for us as people, the Bible often uses trees and fruit to describe people and the fruit to describe what comes out of our lives and how we act, how we behave. It talks about the fruit of ministry, the, the people that are impacted. And, and that's our purpose, even as a church, right, to connect people to God and, because, and to have fruit. And Jesus, very seriously, a little maybe, I don't, I don't know if he was angry or not, but he, he, he says, if you're going to have leaves and be clothed and pretend to be healthy, be a healthy fruit-bearing tree, but if you pull back the, the leaves and it's a bare tree, like, that's not okay. It's not okay for Jesus. It's serious for Jesus. And, and I get Jesus' frustration, but, you know, I, I can't stand being tricked. I don't know about you, but, like, I don't like it. Maybe some people, like, you know, they, they like being joked on or tricked, but one time it, when I was in school, I, I was, you know, um, living on my own, and I was in school, and I hadn't learned really to cook yet, and so I bought some frozen buffalo wings. Actually, I still do that. But I bought some frozen buffalo wings from the store, and I was so excited, you know, like, to microwave them and eat them. And so I microwave them, and I, and I, and I take a bite into it, and I just about lose the lunch I hadn't even eaten yet because it looked like chicken. It was labeled chicken wings. And let me tell you, though, not everything tastes like chicken. It was not chicken. It was tofu. And there was small print on the outside of the package that said, like, tofu, like, chicken, pretend chicken wings. But it, it was not clearly labeled. It was not all my fault, let me tell you. I mean, it was a little bit my fault, but it was not all my fault. And when you expect one thing and you get something else, that is the, the worst. I don't really like tofu to begin with, but, like, I can handle it. But, like, not when I'm expecting to bite into chicken and I get something else. And, and for Jesus, you know, he sees this tree. It's supposed to have fruit. It's not, like a dead-looking tree. It's pretending to be alive. It's pretending to be something it's not. And he's like, this is not okay. How many of us want to put on that good face? 
to share with the world, like, we've got it together, world, right? It's just human nature. It's a lot easier for me to come up here and be like, I got it together, versus like, wow, man, this, this passage hit me this week. It was hard, you know? We don't want to put on that face. We want to put on the face of, I got it. It's good. Life is together. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm an expert Christian over here. I'm an expert at my job. I'm an expert at my parenting. But the reality is, like, we're just not. Like, none of us are. And that's okay because Jesus wants to bring fruit for us. He wants to actually make it easier for us. But we've got to acknowledge first where we're coming from. Don't pretend, Jesus says. It upsets me like nothing else when you pretend to be something you're not. In fact, there was another couple in the Bible that did that. Their names were Adam and Eve. And they ate what they weren't supposed to eat. And they became, it says, they realized they were naked and they were ashamed of it. Before, naked and unashamed. But then, they ate the fruit, they're naked, they're ashamed, and they were like, oh no, what do we do? Let's try to cover it up. What did they use? What did they use? Fig leaves. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. Fig leaves. It's not fooling God. He knows. What's at your core? He knows. What's at your roots? Does your life have the fruit you're pretending for your life to have? Are you truly healthy and producing fruit, or are you just pretending to have it? Is it just smoke and mirrors for you? The truth is, we're all human. We're not perfect, none of us. Jesus wants to speak to us today, and there's more. There's more. So the story continues. He does this to the tree, and then they keep going to their original purpose, the temple. And, and this temple story is sandwiched in the middle of, we're going to come back to the fig tree. And the, the two stories help us interpret each other here. And so he continues, verse 15, They came to Jerusalem. He entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. Jesus is talking to them, no selling and changing money. What are they doing here? Well, the temple, let me give you this picture to help a little bit, right? It had sections. And depending on who you were, it determined which part of the temple you could go in. Jesus, if you look at the left side of that picture, that's like the, the inner part of the temple. And outside of that is where Jesus, the story takes place. Outside of that is the court of the Gentiles. Basically, it's the court of everybody who's not a Jew. If you were clean, you could come to that part. If you weren't clean, you couldn't even come to that part. But you could come to there. And Jesus is there, and they're selling, and they're, they're buying, and, and you, you're, they're selling ways for you to make a sacrifice to God. They're, they're they're paying, they're, they're making money off of other people being able to get to God. And the, the, if you were a woman, you could go to that outermost part. If you were a J Jewish male, you could go inside a little bit more. And then the, the male priest could go the, the furthest of the way in. And the good news for us is we live in the time after Jesus. So if you're not a Jewish man, you don't need to sit in the hallway this morning. We all get to come in here. There's no longer division. Yes, right? Somebody's, Tim's excited about that. I'm excited about that too. Right? Like, we all get to be in here. Doesn't matter your background. Doesn't matter who your parents were. Doesn't matter male, female. G G Galatians says no more male, no more female, no more slave, free, pre like priest, not priest. Like, the curtain was torn in the innermost part of the temple. We all get access now for free to God. That's the good news of, of where we sit today. We all get welcomed into the presence of God. We're all welcomed in here where the presence is. And Jesus is making a statement. And there's a few parts to this statement. The first part of this statement is that the temple is for all people, right? All people. And so they're in this outer part, the Gentiles part. It'd be kind of like if we started just like selling space in the kids' classrooms on Sunday mornings so that like people could come and sell crosses and Bibles and like other things like that, so that you could go there, like, while they're trying to learn their kids' lesson, you can buy, and we'd be like, well, it's okay, because it helps you come in here and worship better, in this part, like, where God is here, right? And we'd be like, that'd be crazy if we did that. So we'd be like, you're interrupting their worship over there, what the kids are doing, right? It, like, you're in the way of what they're doing, this is not right, and this is where Jesus is walking into. And, and this is Jesus, he's saying, it's supposed to be a distraction-free environment to worship and access God. No barriers, no hindrances for all nations. And I love our church and what God is building here because it doesn't matter your background. You could have Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, atheist parents. You could be rich, you could be poor, you could, your skin can be any color. 
It doesn't matter if you're a recovering addict, a CEO at a startup, a, a, a stay-at-home parent. It doesn't matter what you are. All are welcome to the foot of the cross. All are welcome to encounter God and connect to him. We know that all are sinners and are welcome here. So Jesus is like, don't put a barrier. This is for all people. And he's cleaning out this, this court and saying, this is supposed to be a place for all people to worship God. He says, a place, a house of prayer for all nations, a house of prayer. This is the purpose of the temple of the house of God. Something I think a lot of times we gloss over. Like when we think of the church, we are supposed to think of a house of prayer. This is the primary prayer worship. This is the primary purpose for the gathering of God's people. It's not for doing business. It's for prayer and worship. It's not a house of sacrifice. It's not a house of service. It's not a house of anything else. Those things have their place, but it's not the priority. The priority is that it's a house of prayer. It's a primary value for here, us here at Tekoa, that it's a house of prayer. We value the presence of God in prayer so much because we know that's what this house, this church is supposed to be. And so what's your attitude to prayer? Is it a priority? We're, we're trying to make it a priority for this house here in this church. I'm working on it, even in my personal life. But, but how is your, your prayer life? How is your prayer life? I want to invite you, you know, you don't need to be an expert at prayer. God just wants you to be growing in prayer. And so I want to even invite you. On Tuesday nights, we have our all-church prayer. For the next month, we're going to meet right out under the covered patio there, 7.30, Tuesday nights. Um, and we're going to meet here. We'll prayer walk a little bit. We'll pray a little bit just for an hour on Tuesday nights. I want to invite you to come to that. Be a part of praying into what God is going to do. I'm so excited for this fall. Be a part of praying into what God is going to do this fall. If you have personal prayer things, we'll pray for you as well. Um, but come, join us, and grow in, just grow in prayer. And I, and I believe that as we focus on prayer, and even this last year, as we focused on prayer, God is going to just transform not just our church, but our city. In this house, right? That's why we talk about this house. We talk about building the house together. That's one of our, our values here at Tekoa, that we build the house together, because it's God's house. It's not just a church, not just a temple, not just a building. Like, this is his house. This is his people. And then he says to this, you've made it a den of robbers. People were stealing and making money, robbing people so that other, like, they were charging and making money off of people getting access to God charging them so that, that they would come in with their money and they would buy the animal that they would need to sacrifice. On, like the, then they would give the animal to the priest so that the priest could sacrifice it and people could restore their relationship with God. And he's like, you're not supposed to make money off of that. You're not supposed to like, like charge people and be like, well, you're here and you want access to God, so I can charge you whatever I want and you're going to pay it because you need it. Like, no, it's supposed to be a house of prayer for all people. You don't have to give money to worship God. You don't have to earn your way to salvation, Jesus is saying. Actually, you can't earn your way to salvation. It's important. Too many of us are striving to earn our relationship with God. We're trying to do something for God so that we can get something from God. You ever been there? Maybe you've been there this week. Maybe they're right now. But you're like, if I do this for him, maybe I can get what I want from him. God doesn't operate that way. Salvation doesn't work that way. It's a free gift from him, and it I get it. Like, it doesn't make sense to us as humans. Like, why would God do something for free when we deserve punishment? He, he wants to give to us. It doesn't make any sense. Even in the temple, right? It made much more sense for them to be able to, like, okay, I have to sacrifice, and I have to give my hard-earned money, and I have to give this, this sacrifice to God. Like, that makes sense that God would want something like that from me. And Jesus is like, no, God just, just wants you. He doesn't have to charge you for it. He doesn't want to upcharge you for it. It's open for free. Jesus accomplished it on the cross for free with his death and resurrection for everybody. You're sitting here, your family, your neighbors, he's done it for you, he's done it for them, for all people. It doesn't matter your sin, mistakes, background, it's open to all people. So back in the garden, sin enters the world through Adam and Eve. They had been walking with God. They were working, I don't know if you knew that, but they had a purpose and a job to do from the very beginning, even before sin. They were to take care of the garden. The goal of life is not to retire early and do nothing. Nothing wrong with retirement, but we're not supposed to stop and do nothing. The, you have purpose. They have, there's purpose from the beginning for humanity. You have a purpose, a job, to do something in your life. And so there's a tree in the middle of the garden that they're to care for, but not to eat the fruit of. And a pastor said 
to me recently that the tree was here because the biblical principle of tithing was there from the beginning. And I, I never heard it just exactly like that before. And I was thinking about it, and I realized, you know what, that tree was there, and they were supposed to care for the whole garden. They were supposed to care for that tree. They were probably supposed to pick the fruit of that tree. But they weren't supposed to eat of the fruit of the tree. To harvest it, but not eat it. But sin enters, and they're like, well, why would I, why would I do all this work and care for the tree and pick the fruit of the tree and not eat of it? That doesn't make sense. If God can have the fruit, like, so can I. It doesn't make sense. Wouldn't it be better for me to eat it? I'm, gonna, I'm doing all the work. Why don't I get it myself? Forget God. It's the principle of tithing. They were to tithe that fruit. It was, wasn't theirs. Nothing in the garden was theirs. It was all God's. They were there to be caretakers of it. And the amazing thing was God only wanted the fruit of one tree. The rest they got to keep and eat and enjoy as they wanted. One tree, just one tree. And they were so greedy they wanted it from, for themselves, and you and I are exactly the same. We're the same. God gives us homes and jobs and the ability to work, and he gives us eternal salvation in Jesus for free. And what do we do? Well, I worked hard. Well, I want it all for myself. God wants 10% of our income in the tithe, and, and that's it. But we say, you know what? Like, why can't I have that? Versus looking at the other 90% and being like, wow, he's letting me keep all of this. Like, that is pretty generous of God. And instead of just returning to God what's God's, we want to keep it all to ourselves. Listen, if you drop your phone and I pick it up off the ground and hand it back to you, it's not generosity. That's just doing what's right. I don't pick it up and be like, well, this person over here doesn't have a phone. Let me give this to them. They need it over here. No, 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 this is yours. I'm going to bring it back to you as I'm supposed to. We're supposed to give back to God. And then if they also need it over here, then generosity might say, let me find a way so that I can also help this person over here because God has blessed me abundantly. The tithe is the same. 10% of our income given back to God. We return to God what is God's, what is his, through the local church. And then as Christians, Jesus actually encourages us, this is crazy, to be generous on top of that to other people, other organizations. And so many of us, like, we haven't even taken the first step, let alone that step. The church is supposed to be radically, Christians are supposed to be radically the most generous people we know, and unfortunately, most of us aren't. Most of our neighbors don't see that in us. We see people just like the world, maybe worse than the world sometimes. Instead, we complain about the reality that God wants us to tithe. You're like, oh man, I was into the fig tree message, but then pastor had to go and talk about, like, tithing at church. Like, really? One of those churches? Like, yeah, we talk about it here because Jesus talked about it a lot. And I'll get back to the fig tree, and there's good there, but, but this is so important. Like, people I, all the time, they're like, well, you know what? So many excuses and justifications. You know what? I'm tithing my time. You know what? I'm volunteering, and I don't have a lot of money. Actually, you know what? Like, they say time is worth more than money, right? So, like, I'm actually being more generous, like, this way, I'm putting, a, maybe I'm, oh, I'm putting aside the money so I can be generous when other people need it. And like friends, I'll, I'll pay for dinner for other people. You know what, I, I sometimes give to like the nonprofit or I, I help those people in need over here in that other country. And, and you know what all of that is? It's fig leaves. It's saying like, oh, I, I, like I feel good. I'm trying to cover myself up. Feel good about myself. Look good on the outside. And Jesus pulls the leaves away and is like, I don't, I don't see anything under there. It's not, doesn't look like it's supposed to look under there fig leaves and Adam and Eve eating from the tree that belongs to God and trying to cover it up with fig leaves. All those things are great, but you know what giving to all those other things are? They're not the church. You know what the church is? It's the bride of Christ. You know what the church is? It's the way that God has chosen to bring his message of good news of Jesus, of freedom, to the world, to all the nations. That's our mission. That's our mandate from God to all the nations. And so God and Jesus in the New Testament encourages us to tithe and give our 10%, and then get this, be generous on top of that, and get this, be generous with our time and service on top of that. And you know what? It's not pick the easiest one of those and do that and feel good about ourselves. It's do all of them and increase in our generosity in all those other areas. Otherwise, all you're doing is covering yourselves with fig leaves. And you know what? It's so much better to be like, man, Jesus, go ahead and look. I got none to hide. 
And you know what I'll tell you even this week, and it might not just be finances. It might be something else in your life. There, there probably is. There was for me even this week of, of Jesus saying, you know what? I see that area of sin in your life. I see that thing you're holding on to. I see that, that, that thing that you're trying to, to cover up with the, those leaves in your life. And as he pulls it away, it's, it's scary at first when, you, when you'd be like, okay, Jesus, go ahead and take a look. Like, Jesus, it's, it's, it's barren under there. Wish it wasn't. It's a little unhealthy under there. Wish it wasn't. But then Jesus says, okay, now I can work with that. Now you're not hiding anymore. Now I got good news for you with that. And so in this area, in gen generosity, Jesus, Jesus pulls back the leaves and, and he looks and he wants to increase your faith so he can increase your fruit. You know what you find when you pull back the fig leaves of my family's life? Fruit. So much fruit. And, I, and I'm not ashamed to come up here and say it. And I don't say it to boast, but I, but I say it of like, you can follow our example. And I can tell you, you can see the fruit of our generosity and in so many other ways, the fruit of our life. You can see it in our home. You can see it in our kids. And no, they're not perfect. And no, we're not perfect. But there's so much good fruit. And, and it's so much better than if we had just Try to live a life covered up with a bunch of fig leaves, and the leaves look good, and it looks pretty. But instead, the fruit, oh, the fruit tastes so much sweeter. Because you can look at a fig leaf, but it's not good for much other than looking at it. The fruit you can eat and get nourishment from and sustenance from, and you can savor that fruit. It's so amazing. It's, it's so transformative. We're turning, you know, this last week, part of this even started last week, Allie and I were, like, writing out our tithe. Matter of actually, we don't written a tithe check in a long time. We were, we were typing it in, into the app. And, and as we do that, we always like to pray over it. And we, we pray over, okay, God, like we love our church so much and we want to see more people find freedom and more people find hope and more people encounter the love of Jesus. And, and we're praying over it. And Allie actually goes to me. She's like, it's crazy. I, I, I couldn't imagine spending this amount of money on anything else this easily. But, but we're not even spending it on anything. We're giving it. And, and it's, it's easy for us now. And now you might, that might be a crazy far out for you challenge. And maybe you need to start a little bit smaller. Or maybe you just need to go all in on it. But let me tell you that you get to that point where it, like, it's easy. Because you've, you've seen all the fruit. You're like, I don't, I'm not going to hold on to this. Because I've seen that life is so much better. And even this passage, we flipped it. And be like, well, Jesus is talking against them and the, those money people in the church. Like, get those money people out of the church. Get those, like, people, like, pastors shouldn't talk about it. And we flipped it and said, oh, like, just get all of it. Like, oh, it's free. And in reality, like, yes, access to God is free. Access to your salvation is free. It costs nothing. But after we encounter the salvation of God, our response is to worship Him and to trust Him in all areas of our life, including this area of our life. Because our finances do matter. Following God matters. The fruit of our life matters. The fruit of your life matters. And part of that is trusting God with our finances and seeing that the church is making a difference, seeing that your finances are making a difference in this world, not something that you're hiding from God, living a life of generosity to all people, as Jesus said. Now, Jesus is saying, don't make it easy for those who are rich to access God and make it difficult for those who are poor to access God. Of course not. All people, equal access to God. But we are supposed to financially trust Him and to be generous. It's not the prerequisite to come to salvation in God. That's the fruit of us coming to salvation in God. The prerequisite of coming to God is not our finances or what we do with them. That's free. That's open no matter what. But the fruit of our response to Him is that. We don't keep anyone from worshiping God. It's open to all. And Jesus calls out the temple and he declares the destruction of the temple practices as, as, as hindering people from God. But we are supposed to be generous. We're supposed to be generous with him. He cares about you, that you are trusting him. He wants to move in power in your life. And I've, I've seen it in my life, and we're going to see that Jesus has power in his words. And I've seen it in my life. What God has accomplished, and I've seen it in so many other people's lives, even on our team, in our church, what God has accomplished in the last four years, September's coming up, four years of our church, what God has accomplished in lives and families and generations that have been impacted is amazing. Miracles have happened 
through our words, through our actions, literal miracles of salvation, finances, healing, restoration have happened because of trusting God. But if you're covering yourselves with fig leaves, hoping for the fruit to come, the fruit only comes from the roots on the inside. So my question to you today, what does Jesus see when he pulls back the leaves of your life? trying to hide behind your debts or credit cards or fancy clothes? Are you trying to, to, um, are you trying to, to hide what's, what's really there? What does he see behind the leaves? You know, when he sees the leaves of my family, even as this confronted me this week, I was realizing, like, Jesus sees generosity when he pulls back the leaves of my family's life. But like after the 10%, I hold pretty tightly. After I'm generous a little bit, I hold pretty tightly. Because there's some things my family wants, but the finances aren't there for it, and we just trust. And, and, and I don't want God to pull back the leaves and see a little bit of fruit. I want him to see a life that is more than required, that is so filled with fruit, complete submission to God, overflowing with the fruit of generosity. So let me stop for a second to just have a quick family conversation for a minute. If you're a guest here, hang on for a minute. If you're still exploring faith and not sure what you think of Jesus, hang on for a minute. You're welcome here. No pressure to, to give or anything, right? But finances are important for our church, and I want to be honest for a minute with a few facts, and then we'll get back to the conclusion of this story for all of us, right? Doing ministry costs money. We have to rent this space. We need supplies for the kids' classrooms. We do things for new people and marketing and community events and staff salaries and replacing things that break and keeping everything running smoothly. And I think we've done a great job of running actually really lean this last year, but let me tell you a few things of this year versus last year. Attendance for the first six months of both years, up 13% this year. Right? That's great. God is doing things. He's growing this church. It's good. Yeah. Baptisms. We had nine last year. We've already had six just in the first half. We're way above what God is going to do there. And we've had so much growth in groups and so many other areas in Healthy Church and includes so many other things I don't have time to go into. I, I know it's more than those two things, but I just want to, to ignore, like, okay, great. We're a healthy, growing church. Giving within our church, down 9% this year. And it, it's hard, like, it's hard. Like, inflation is a real thing that probably all of us can feel and face. But I just want to make you aware of the reality. Also, we're transitioning from the baby church, and, and we're not quite there yet, but we're transitioning from a lot of other churches and people were like, hey, we believe in your vision. We want to help you get off the ground because what you're doing is valuable. And so financially, they were investing in that. And as a, that happens, healthily, we're supposed to transition from that. And so there's, there's, there's a lot of finances that are coming off there as well that have been supporting us in this. Now, don't get the wrong impression. I have so much hope for our church. As a church, I shared those ch stats, and we are a healthy, growing church. We're seeing salvations and baptisms. There's so much fruit in our church, and there's so much planned that's going to be incredible. Just in the next three months, it's going to be, it's going to be fun, and it's going to be good. And there, there's so much fruit. Fruit comes from giving in faith first. So while the budget doesn't fully balance yet, and now don't worry, we're not like, the bank account's not going to run out next month. Like, we're not in that place. I'm just letting you know, like, it just doesn't balance yet. But, like, at the same time, like, we've given over $6,000 to church planning this year and helping start other churches. We've given a help start clean water. We've got things planned for a free event for the community. The, 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 the community center wanted to charge everybody, and we're like, no. Like, if a kid needs to, wants to go and be a part of the event, like, we don't, we don't want them to not be a part of it because they can't afford it. Like, we have so much planned. Church, I want to do so much more, though, as a church. I want to give away more. I want to support more churches. I want to support more families in need. I want to do more for our community. I want to see hundreds of more salvations and baptisms, and I want to see this room filled to overflowing every Sunday, so much so that we have to start a second service, and I believe that's coming. The two questions are, the two questions are, will you be a part? That's the first question. Second, at what speed does that happen? God's moving. He's going to accomplish it. And ministry, like, has taught me enough that I just don't worry anymore. Like, God's always got it. He's always providing. 
The, the question, though, is at what speed the vision gets accomplished, and that's, that's dependent on the generosity of our church. Do we speed ahead, or are we, you know, waiting on God to, to provide? So let me give you a couple quick real numbers, and then we are going to move on, and we'll get back to the fig tree and round this out. But I want to let you know that right now for, for the budget, we are actually, what we need to see by the end of the year is we need our monthly giving to go up by $7,000 a month just to give you like a real number of what we're praying for and seeking. And so for some of us, that's like, sounds crazy amount. Um, but, you know, God just wants us to do our part. I don't know what your part is. I don't know what your family's part is. Um, but I want to invite you to do your part of what God is calling you to do to, to, to reach that. And I want to see us just doing so much this year. And I believe God's going to do it because he's called for it. And I hope you are a part of it. So he comes back the next day. He went and stayed in Bethany again. He's going back to the temple. And they pass the tree, and it says, the tree was withered to its roots. And Peter, remembering what happened yesterday, said to him, Rabbi, look, the tree that you curse has withered. Jesus is like, good observation, Peter. <laughs> Jesus answered to them, this is a weird answer, have faith in God. Like, yeah, Peter, like, of course it did. Have faith in God. Church, there is power in your words. There was power in Jesus' words. He, he said he, he cursed the tree and it was cursed. So what are you speaking? What are your words? Don't offhandedly curse yourself or others. Don't speak death. Speak life. Proverbs says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. Speak life in your life. Are you gossiping about other people? Are you complaining about other people? Are you com complaining about your job? Are, are you complaining about what you don't have? Or are you speaking life? into it. We're his ambassadors. Jesus is ambassadors in the world. Even in the story, Jesus doesn't cast out the people in the temple and like aggressively bring, bring the beat down on them. He wants to make a way for He wants to restore them to God. He wants to make a way for them. He's bringing life. And bringing life when there is death is so hard. To do it and not just cause more death is so hard. Like It's part of what I have to do each week, and thankfully I have the Holy Spirit to help me do it. But to, to bring life and not more death is so hard, right? Jesus is saying, don't make it hard for people to worship because it's, it's, it, after the worship, following Jesus is already hard. So don't make it hard for them to get to Jesus in the first place because after Jesus, the Holy Spirit helps us live it out. We don't have to do it on our own. As soon as the leaves are, are peeled away and Jesus is like, oh, yep, there's no fruit, and we allow him into that, he gives us the fruit, not us. We don't have to work harder. That's what the story is saying. You don't have to work harder to get to God. Just come to him as you are. And as you come to him, he's going to bring life into your life. He says, have faith. So let me invite the band back up here because I'm over my time already. And he says, have life. This is the core of Jesus' message. Ha message. Have faith in God, verse 22. So what does Jesus see behind the fig leaves of your life? Is it faith in God or faith in yourself? Is it faith in your works so that you can control things or that you can have safety or that you can have escape? Or is it faith in God? The whole multi-day teaching that we've looked at today is Jesus, Jesus saying this one thing, have faith in God and not in fig leaves. You can believe with your mind, but faith comes out of your heart. You can determine to believe something. And so many times, when we talk about faith, what we think about is like our, putting our spiritual will into motion. Like if I believe hard enough and work hard enough in my faith, then I can accomplish it. But really, Jesus is saying, have not more faith. Just accept the faith that God wants to put in your life. Jesus wants to give you the faith. He wants to do it for you. Our faith from, comes from inside our roots. And we have the faith of God working in us. Faith doesn't come from striving. Faith comes from surrender. As we surrender to God's will, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when you ask for these things according to his will, when you seek to bring heaven to earth, it will be done. And the size of your request does not matter. It's irrelevant because of the one you are asking, not because of the amount of faith you have. Because of him and what he's done. Anything is possible. He told the mountain to be thrown in the sea and it's fine. God's got it. He created the mountain in the first place. It will be done. It will be done. So what are you asking God for? What are you asking for him in this place, in the house of prayer, 
are you coming to God for? Secondly, I want to ask you, do you have faith in God? Or are you trying to manipulate him to get what you want from him? He gives not because of what we've done, but because we are his beloved children. You can position yourselves to better receive as his child, and part of that is asking. We need to ask. The parable of the prodigal son shows that. The other son stayed at home and didn't ask, so he didn't get. He didn't need to do anything. It wasn't become a better son. It wasn't work harder for God, and then you'll get it. He just needed to ask God, and then it was going to come because of his love as a father. Your financial faithfulness and generosity doesn't win you more money from God. Sorry. Like, I wish I could preach that message. That would be an easier message to preach. But it does position ourselves as his sons and daughters to receive his blessing. And to see, so he sees fruit when he pulls back the leaves of your life. And it's not a checklist, do these things and then God will be happy or appeased or do these things and be transformed. Let's do these things and be transformed. That's what it is. So what does Jesus see behind the fig leaves of your life? You have the power to overcome the evil of this world. You have the ability to overcome anxiety in your life. Not you, God in you. You don't have to cover yourselves with fig leaves to try and muscle your way through it, to cover it up and pretend like the illusion and like hope that the illusion becomes reality. You don't have to have more drip and more followers and have that promotion to fill all of your needs. Fill all your weekends with travel and find the right spouse and have the right kids and, and, and none of that's going to fix it. Jesus wants to free you from trying to cover your life with more leaves and say, all right, God sees me and I'm unashamed because I know that he accepts me just as I am and he loves me. He sent Jesus in that place. We don't have to run and hide and cover it up. He wants to set you free to live a life filled with fruit. He wants to do it in you. Not you work harder, him do it more in you. That's Jesus. So would you pray with me and invite Jesus in in faith so that we can trust him and have faith. God, we invite you in. God, I pray that you would help us have that faith that you call us to have. God, God we don't, we come to you and we don't even have don't even have the faith on our own. We need your help for the faith. So God, I pray that you would give it. And it, it seems so unfair that we would come to you and we have nothing to bring to you. And then we say, could you give a little bit more, God? But God, I hope, pray that you would help us realize that that's not a burden. That's a joy that you have for us as our Heavenly Father. Of, of course I would want to give to you. God's table is overflowing. And, and he's and, and as a parent, he's a good parent. And he's got, I got so much. And as you come to his table, he's not going to withhold it from you. He's like, I, I just wanted you to come. I wanted to give it to you. I have so much fruit for your life. I, I have a better life for you, and I want to give it to you. God, I pray that you would help us realize that. I pray that you would give us a bold faith to walk in faith. I pray, God, for those that are here right now, and I, I, I invite you, whatever you might be holding on to, Whatever leaves you've been covering up and, and, and not wanting to expose yourself to God and say, yeah, I'm, I'm weak. Yeah, I've messed up, God. Yeah, I'm not perfect, God. And, and you've been trying to, to cover it up and put on a good face and cover, and cover yourselves. I pray that as I did this week, that you would just bring it to God and be like, I've been holding on to this. I'm, I'm finally done. Go ahead and look behind the leaves, God. And I know there's nothing there. And I know you're not going to be happy what you see, Jesus. But I also know, Jesus, you love me and you can bring restoration. And Jesus is going to speak life into that tree. I pray that you would see it right now, that the tree of your life, that as you, you say, go ahead and look behind the leaves, Jesus, he isn't speaking judgment right now. The cross is speaking life. Jesus is speaking life, and he wants to bring new life to you. He wants to bring fruit in your life right now. And I, and, and I just pray that you would see that he is doing that. Jesus, I pray that you're, you right now would be speaking words of life and, and love to them. And if you've never trusted Jesus, before we finish praying, I was given opportunity. Jesus says, I know, I know it's not perfect under there. I know that that tree is rotten, but that's okay. Jesus doesn't want perfection. God wants us to come to him with an open heart. And he did it, what we couldn't accomplish, he accomplished it on the cross with his death and resurrection. And so if you want to trust him and say, Jesus, I want to follow you, just echo these words with me. Jesus, I, I admit I'm broken and not perfect. 
Jesus, I believe you died and rose again for me. Jesus, I choose to live for you. Help me live for you now. Amen. Amen. Would you guys stand? We're going to worship together with a song of trust in God. I invite you. You know what? This space, we call the altar down at the front. As I said, right, with Jesus' sacrifice, there's no more temple walls. We all have access. So if you want to, come down here, worship God. I'll be on the side if you want prayer. I would love to pray for you. But let's just make this song our prayer of, hey, we're going to trust in you, God. We're going to have faith in you, nothing else in my life. Let's worship him.